Long ago, Vikings and barbarians did battle and waged wars for treasures and glory. The mighty warriors possessed weapons of great power, the power to topple towers and crash castle walls. Battles were won and lost by the crossbow and the catapult. This episode marks our first foray into the world of crossbows and catapults. These sets were put out by a company called Lakeside Games starting in 1983. Today, we're looking at the set that started it all for me, the battle set. Okay, this is my original battle set. Uh, let's pull the lid off here and see what we got. And of course, the first thing that She-Ra did when I took the lid off the box was to get in it and sit down. Okay, I stored a couple extra things in here. That's a sticker sheet that goes to another set. For some reason, I saved all the sticker sheets. That's a, a rule book uh, slash catalog. There's another one. The battle guide. There's another battle set guide. We're gonna put that one aside because that's the one that we actually need for this. Another battle guide. This is the original sticker uh, page that came with the thing. All of them are used, obviously. Okay, this is one of the castle mats. This one's for the Barbarian Castle. And then, of course, this one here is for the Viking Castle. All right, let's take a look at some of the stuff in the bags. Um, actually, let's look at the weapons first. This is uh, one of the catapults. This is a catapult for the Vikings. You can see kind of how it works here. Uh, rubber bands are what power these things. That's the secret behind the weapons. This is the crossbow for the Vikings. You can see these are all still in really good shape. Uh, none of these pieces are broken or anything, which is great because they got played with a whole lot. Okay, in the bag here, uh, we have a Viking. There should be four of these guys in there and I counted them, there were. Um, here's one of the castle, uh, castle blocks there and you can see how they fit together kind of like big loose Lego pieces all right and this is a, uh, a flag there's five of these for each side four for the borders and one for the tower and here's the tower and you can see the back here is hollowed out because you actually use the, the hollowed out part in the game and this is a battle carom this is a Viking battle carom you can see the Viking sticker on it there. And now we'll look at the Barbarian stuff. This is the Barbarian catapult, different colors, Barbarian crossbow. Uh, barbarian castle block. Barbarian figure, again, four of these guys too. Uh, just uh, as a note here, these bags are actually, I believe they are the original bags that came with my battle set. I still have the plastic bags. Uh, here's the Barbarian flags. Barbarian tower. The sticker's coming off a little bit there. You can see all the castle blocks and towers and everything are the same for both sides. It's the same model, just different colors. And there's a Barbarian Battle Carom. And here's a glimpse at royalty. This is the King Barbarian Battle Carom. It's got a special sticker on it. And um, I'll show you the uh, King Viking as well. Let's see, they're radiant. So those are all the pieces to the original battle set. Uh, I managed to keep all these pieces together in the same box for all these years, which kind of surprised me actually when I opened it up again. Well, this is what I found for rubber bands. Uh, most of them were dried up and busted. Uh, this is a busted rubber band. Uh, this one is pretty dried up. You can crack it. <laughs> these rubber bands are 30 years old or more. Uh, I found a couple that were actually intact. There we go. That one's still got some spring to it. Same with this here. And this one too, that just broke right now. 
<laughs> so anyway, I found two rubber bands that still work. So uh, for future episodes, I'm going to have to get some more rubber bands. Let me show you how these things get put on the weapons if they don't break. You put it around the knob there, double it, loop it around, and back around the knob again so that the catapult has the spring. See? Oh, it got away from me. <laughs> anyway, it's pretty powerful. And this is the how the rubber band goes around the crossbow. There's a little post here at the bottom. You put the rubber band around the post. I'm struggling with it here a little bit. It goes over the top. We're gonna ignore the back piece for a moment. And then over the other side and back over the, the little post again. And then you pull the doubled piece back and notch that in the crossbow. And that's how that works. There, yeah, still springs. Let's take a look at an example here of how these castles could be built. The original set came with 12 blocks and uh, the tower. So you could build these in a couple different ways, uh, a bunch of different ways, really, any way you wanted to, uh, as long as it was on the, uh, the castle bounds. So a lot of times uh, I would either build my castle like this with a square front, put a little flag on the top there, Another option to build uh, that I would do sometimes was a uh, curved front. And really it's the same amount of bricks on the layers pretty much, except you're doing them around in a, like a semicircle. And there's the semicircle castle. Okay, now let's uh, show you the basics of how this stuff works. This is a crossbow. As you can see at close range there, it does a pretty good job at demolishing the uh, castle walls. Look at it again in slow motion. Well, let's take a look at the catapult here. Now what I'm trying to do here with the catapult, uh, which I'm missing terribly, is I'm um, trying to knock over the tower. That's uh, one of the ways that you could win this game, was to knock the tower over. Take two. Let's try the king and see if he fares any better. Take three. Nope. Let's try it again. Take four. Almost. Take five. Still no. I'm a terrible shot, apparently. Well, let's try another one. Take six. Six times the charm. Hey, the tower finally knocked over. So that was the object of the game. There were a few ways that you could win uh, this game. One of the ways that you could win was knocking over the tower, uh, just like I showed you. Another way was uh, if you could land your little battle caroms into the courtyard beyond where the walls are, uh, and not in the water, because if they're in the water, they're prisoners, uh, which is a whole different thing. You could uh, land them on as spies, and you put one of your little figures in there, and if you could get four spies in the courtyard, you could also win. Another way to win was if you push the tower or the uh, castle debris off uh, far enough, you could actually land a carom onto the other person's treasure, and that was another way to win. And another way to win, I guess, would be to bleed your opponent out. If you captured everything that your opponent had and they had nothing left, um, then, uh, of course, you would win by default. Whenever you captured something as a prisoner, you put it in the back of the tower. So as you captured more prisoners, your tower got heavier because uh, it had all the other uh, players' battle caroms to weigh it down. Of course, those are some of the ways that you could win in the rules, and uh, this game encouraged imagination. So you could invent your own ways to play and win this game. Again, as long as both commanders agree. So in this episode, I just kind of wanted to show a basic first look at um, the crossbows and catapult stuff, because these toys were really cool. It was a lot of fun. I actually have uh, all the sets. I'm looking for them, and uh, the next time that we visit this, I will show all the accessories uh, for crossbows and catapults. And of course, we'll be uh, preparing for a future battle between myself and uh, She-Ra. So be on the lookout for future episodes. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the show, thanks for coming by. Please subscribe and like. And uh, if you've been with us for a while, welcome back again. Thanks for watching the show. Good to have you here. We'll see you the next time, and I miss my toys.